Dennis Downs from Antioch, Illinois. Today I'm going to be making the dog ponies in high relief using the Barachoa technique. I'm going to get started. First thing I have to do is chop up the grasses to make my pulp. This is baby blue stem NATO grasses. Now I've got to cook this down. That looks like enough. Now I'm ready to head into the studio. I have enough pulp now to get started on the project. This is my studio, this is where I do my work. I'm gonna start my project by covering a piece of hardboard with butcher paper so that our final project won't stick to the board when it has to be removed. I'm gonna need to tape this down so it'll be nice and snug. Now I need to get some measurements drawn out so that we can use that as a guideline so the piece will be uniform. Right now I'm measuring the outside dimensions of the final piece. All right, now we have our outside dimensions of our project, and I can start shaping the plasticine clay dog ponies. The reason I use plasticine clay is I need a material that won't harden or stick to the pulp. Once I have my plasticine clay flattened out, I start shaping the dog ponies. The dog ponies are a combination of a horse and a dog. It's a creation that I came up with on the banks of the Snake River in Idaho. It's a good luck omen. I freehand the sculptures out of the clay. Once I get all the images finished, then I lay the dog ponies out on the board. Now that I have my images, I need to apply the pulp around the dog ponies to form out the paper piece. I make the tools that I'm using from antlers that I find after the deer have shed them in the woods. The reason I make my own pulp out of the baby blue stem grasses is because the Native Americans would have also used this material for their mats and baskets. I became interested in using native materials after being allowed to see actual artifacts that were left by the tribes that lived in the Great Lakes region. This antler here is an actual artifact from the area. I belong to the Wisconsin Archaeological Rescue Group, so it was a good feeling finding an actual tool from our area to use. Right now I'm bringing the pulp back with a straight edge so that it stays on the lines that we drew out earlier. I've covered the background with pulp. Now I'm applying the pulp over the dog pony sculpture to give it the high relief effect. I try to keep the pulp warm. It makes it a lot easier to work with than having the material cold. When I've covered the dog ponies completely with pulp, then I'll let the piece dry. Because it takes two weeks for the piece to actually dry, I went ahead and made a similar piece, and now I'll be removing it from the hardboard and taking out the plasticine dog ponies from behind. I'm using a painter's palette knife because it's so thin, it actually goes in between the pulp piece and the hardboard and does a nice job of removing the piece. This palette knife's probably older than me. So far, so good. I have to make sure there's no resistance before I lift it up. When the piece is actually dry, it should have the consistency of wood. What I have to do now is remove the plasticine dog ponies from the back of the piece without damaging it. I'm using a clay pick to remove the dog ponies from the back, and the challenge in this is not to damage the front of the actual finished piece. There's one dog pony. Now that I've removed all the dog pony images from the back of the piece, I need to rough up the surface and apply the piece to a piece of acid-free foam core. I need to rough up this surface because it's so smooth it wouldn't adhere to the foam board. I'm roughing up the back of the piece with uh, 150 grain sandpaper. What I'm gonna do now is apply carpenter's glue to the back of the piece. I use carpenter's glue to adhere the piece because the pulp is a lot like wood. I'm applying these sticks on the top of the piece. 
so that I can place weights on top of the finished piece and help it adhere to the foam core properly. I've gone ahead and made this piece because the glue had to dry overnight, and now I'm going to start to paint it. For a piece like this, I actually mix my own paints, sometimes making stains from natural plants. And with this piece, I've actually added a little bit of resin to the paint so it'll adhere to the paper piece properly. I'm trying not to get any of the paint on either the high relief dog pony images or the border itself. By doing that, it adds a different dimension to the piece. I finished painting the piece and now I'm going to put it in one of my handmade frames. I always put my originals in frames that I've made from scratch to tie the piece together. And now I've brought the dog ponies to life.